Hi, I'm Natasha Collins from Nevi Pie Cakes and I'm here today with the Painting on Fondant tutorial. Um, this is my award-winning book, The Painted Cake, which has got lots of projects in it for beginners to experts. And today I'm going to show you how to do this basic rose cake. We're going to be using my own brand of paints, which I've made with Squire's Kitchen, especially for painting. They're really great. And my own brushes. And then we're going to show you how to do these beautiful roses. So once you've got those skills, you can move on. You can do more expert cakes or different styles, whatever you want to do. Right, so we're going to start with the first layer of colour. And um, people find this quite difficult to get a very um, light tone. So I'm just putting some of the neat paint onto my palette there. And then I'm getting all of the paint off my brush and bringing some water to the palette. And then I'm just going to bring the paint to the palette. If you do it the other way round, you won't get that light tone. So you want a nice light tone and out of these colours you should be able to get about four or five tones. So this is a raspberry I'm using. When you're painting a rose you want to think about a circle. So I'm going to start just by doing a light guideline like that. You don't have to do that but it just helps otherwise you might end up with a bit of a squashed rose. So I'm going to start with the top petals. Now you can paint whichever bit you want to do, there's no right or wrong as long as it's the lightest tone. And you can see the paint is quite flat. If it starts to look like this, so really really blobby, it's just too wet. So we just want to get rid of some of that water. So the trick to using these paints is to use them as dry as you can. So you can just get rid of excess liquid before you paint. You can see how much has come out. And then I'm just carrying on with these petals. And you want to think about a fan. So you've got the fan that goes up and then the petals fan out from it. So you don't want all the petals standing up. And then here, this point here, sort of in the middle of the circle, that's where the centre is. And the centre is always the darkest bit. So we always want to paint that in. And then we have the outside petals. So we're going to paint those in. And you can see that I'm just leaving a bit unpainted, a little bit of white. And then quite often people will put a petal in here and they'll leave it. Um, and if you look at it, if you look at it straight on, it might not look so bad. But if you look at it from another angle, it'll look squashed like an oval. And what they've forgotten to do is put these bottom petals in and that gives it that nice big blousy rose look and also makes it a lot more circular. So we're just going to wash out the rest of those guidelines at this point and if you make a mistake at any point you just wash it out with a bit of water and then just get rid of that excess water. So that's the first layer of the rose and you can see it's quite streaky, it's got lots of um, paintbrush marks in them. That's absolutely fine because that will make it look like you've got more petals, that's what you want. You don't want it to look flat but you don't want it to look too blobby. So then before I do the second rose I'm going to add just a couple of leaves and again I'm using a nice light tone, I'm going to dab it off. That could go a little bit lighter, so I'm just adding a bit of water. Now, when you think of the shape of your leaf, you want to think about that central vein there, and this side is going to be darker. And then the other side has got some um, high, white highlights. So you have the central vein that got, runs down the leaf. The leaf will probably fold on that vein. One side will be in shadow one side of being light and then you have veins that go out. Now you don't want to paint those but you do want to paint in the direction that those veins would go. So, so you can see I'm just moving my paintbrush in the directions that the veins of the leaf would be. So I'm just going to stick there with those two leaves and now, or oh actually I might put another one over here as well. Like that. There we go. 
and then I'm going to do the next rows and the next rows this rows we're kind of looking at it side on the next rows it's almost like we're looking at it straight down so the center is going to be kind of the the central point I suppose so again we're using a light pink I'm just doing it a little bit darker than I did with the first one um, just so that you can see the two different roses so again I'm using the raspberry color and you want to paint right up to these elements. What happens sometimes is people paint like this and they leave a white line between all the elements, but you want to make sure you go right up, paint around it. So again, we're thinking about a circle, but you don't want it to be too circular. You still want to get that petal shape in. And then the center of the rose will be here. So don't forget you've got a bit of the rose going behind that. And again, that's going to be the darkest point. So there we go. So you can see that I'm adding the petals in now and I'm kind of making a shape like an arc. So it's thin at the ends and then it goes fat and then it goes thin. You don't want to be making just straight lines. It wants to have a bit more of a shape to it. And it's going to be darker here where the elements overlap. So where one flower's on top of another, underneath you'll get more shading. So you want to make that a bit darker and then this area a little bit whiter. So now I'm going to do some forget little forget-me-not flowers. I'm using the bluebell color and again, so with all of these colors, we're watering them down to get that light tone. And these are little five petal flowers and you want each petal to be a little bit round on the edge. And then really, really important, don't paint in the middle. You don't want them to join up and meet. So we've got some of these. And again, I'm painting them right up to the edge. So while I'm just painting these, I'm just going to tell you about the brushes which you want to be using when you're painting. You want to be using a synthetic brush. So if you're used to painting watercolours, you'll have used... Um, a sable brush or a natural bristle because they are the best brushes but unfortunately with this technique because everything's so sticky the paint and the um, the fondant obviously is sugar so it's really sticky a natural bristle brush will just splay immediately so definitely get in sy a synthetic brush but make sure it's a nice um, fine synthetic brush some bristles are a bit hard and bristly um, so you want to make sure that it's fine and then when you finish using them wash them with cold water never use hot water and then just roll them in a little bit of washing up liquid just roll the top just with that kind of movement pull it back to the point and then leave it overnight or until you next need it just making sure that you wash out the um, the soap before you use it again and that will help prolong their lives Right, so I've done that. I'm now going to add a little bit of purple to that. Well, it's called grape. Just to get a little bit more interest in the colour. We don't want it to look too uniform. So I can just paint over a few of these with the grape. So while it's still wet, the colours will blend in, which is fine if you're doing something like this. But to get the kind of layer of tones, you want to leave each layer to dry. Um, and with these paints they should dry in about 10 minutes if it's taking a lot longer than that and you're not anywhere particularly cold then you've probably used too much water so 10 minutes per layer to dry okay so that's my grape so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in a few more leaves I'm going to add a different color green just to give it a bit more interest. If you use the same green on, on a bunch like this, it can get a little bit boring. So just a little bit of this lighter green again. I've got my vein. Like that. With the leaves, you don't want them to be too uniform all around the 
rows if you've kind of got one here one here one here it can start to look to look a bit like a clock face so you want maybe two together here then one here with different different gaps I'll say gaps I know that's not the proper word between them um, so we'll have a little bit of this light green over here as well and rose leaves sometimes have that kind of slightly serrated edge so you can paint that in again if you want to Try and make them all of a fairly consistent size. You don't want to have kind of a massive leaf and then a tiny little leaf. And if you find them, um, like some people paint in a much bigger way, so maybe their roses are bigger, don't try and squish your leaf onto the edge. Have it go, paint it over the edge, otherwise it can look a bit odd. So we'll have another leaf here. It doesn't matter if it's a slightly darker tone of green that's quite nice and then maybe here I'll just do a little one on a little stalk for you now <coughs> as I said I'm using a size 8 brush I can use the very tip of that brush to get a nice stalk like that if you find that you're doing something and it's looking too chunky like that then change and use a finer brush like the size 1 with stalks, you want to always have a nice curve on them. You don't want any straight lines. And I'm just going to show you again how to wash something out. So just a bit of water. You've got to make sure that your water is nice and clean. And then just dab it out. If you're left with the watermark at the end when all your um, paint is dry, you can just rub a tiny little bit of corn flour, corn starch into that, and it'll take the shininess away. But I never need to do that, it's always fine. So we'll have slightly smaller leaves. So we want a leaf at the end of that stalk. Like this. And then we're just going to have a few smaller ones kind of floating away from these forget-me-nots. Like that. So that's the first layer. So you want that to dry. And as I said, it should be about dry in about 10 minutes. And then we'll move on to the second layer. Right, so I'm going to show you how to do the second layer now. So it's basically a similar way that we did the first, but we're just using darker tones. So just slightly less water. And you want it to be dry. So if it's a little bit tacky, that's fine. But if it's too wet, what will happen is when you paint, it'll lift the colour off and you won't see the tones. So for the second layer on this rose, I'm stepping down about a centimetre and I'm going to mirror the marks that I made at the top. So if you can see the difference in tones, that kind of step, that's what you want. If you stand away from it and you can't see any difference, then you need to darken up your second tone. But sometimes you might have done your first tone a bit too dark and that's why you can't see it. So you might need to use a lot neater colour. So again, like I said before, we've got the centre here that's going to be the darkest bit. Then... We're just going to add a few bits. So what I normally do is I choose one side of the rose to be dark and one side to be light. It doesn't matter which because you get light sources coming from everywhere. Just as long as you make that kind of distinction, it'll look good. So we're not going to add too much dark on that side. So that's it. That's the second tone because you see that the next tones are a lot quicker to, to do. They don't take as long as the first because you've got your shape. It's just adding to it. Um, so for this rose, because it's a little bit darker, obviously I'm going to need a lot darker tone. And again, that darkness wants to be in the middle. Now make sure, quite often with this kind of rose, people then cover up all that first tone. You want to make sure that you see both. You don't want to obliterate it. But again, coming right under here, and we're making this quite dark so that you can see where the two roses are. So I'm just going to put a, just a tiny bit of that colour on this side of the rose. Like that. There we go. And then I'll do these little flowers. So again, a darker tone. 
we're only going to put a couple of tones. The smaller the flowers there are, are, the less layers you need. So these are only going to have a couple of layers of the colour. I'm just going to water that down a tiny bit. Like that. And again, you don't want to cover the whole of the flower with this same tone. But it's going to be darker where it's underneath leaves or petals or underneath other petals like that. So you can see I'm working quite quickly. You don't want to get too um, small and scratchy. Like that. And then some of the grape. Here we go. Like that. And now I'm going to put another tone onto the leaves. So darker green. With these light leaves, um, the light, brighter green, I tend to just do one layer of that. I don't want it to be kind of too too bright and modern. I still want a slightly vintage look. So we're thinking about the vein. So the darker bit is going to be where that vein is. And then again, we're just going to move our brush in the direction of those veins there. Again, with the leaves, you don't want to paint every leaf with the same tone um, of sh shading. Some's, some are going to have less, some are going to have a bit more. So this one, because it's kind of quite on top, we're just going to add a, just a little bit here. Not too much. This one, because it's quite dark, we can add a bit more. And then here, just a little bit. Like that. Okay, so that's the second layer and you can see already it's starting to get a bit more life. So quite often when people paint, they don't use these tones. It's very flat and that's why the flowers don't look as real as they could do. So you can see that, that even that just that second layer of colour has really pumped it up a bit. So I'm just going to finish off with the last few layers um, and as I said that you really want to leave each layer to dry. And the great things about these paints that I'm using is that they will dry really quickly, even neat from the part, which I'm going to use now. So other paste colours, other paints tend to be made with glycerin. And so they go a little bit sticky and they'll stay a bit shiny. Um, and some of them don't dry for even 24 hours or never. Some of them never dry. They just stay tacky. But even straight from the part, this should dry 15, 20 minutes. Um, the layers where you've added water will dry in about 10 minutes, but straight from the pot, 15, 20 minutes, and it should be totally dry. So it's my own range that I made with Squire's Kitchen, and that was one of the, the, pro the qualities of the product I was looking for, quick drying time, because otherwise, if you're having to wait hours for layers to dry, you're just not gonna get through it. So I'm just adding, I've got some damson, which is a slightly darker pinky red colour that I'm going to use in the centre of this because we've kind of used neat colour already. And again, I'm just leaving some of the previous tones like that. And then I'm going to add some white. So um, I've got the white here. Um, now I've tried other white paste and they're just not very good, but this is great for painting with. It'll go on. If you want to use it on chalkboards, it's, it's perfect. So again, you want to use it straight from the pot. Don't add any water to it or it will be um, too thin. You won't see it. So I'm just going to, where I've left that white, I'm just going to add a few highlights like that and then a few here. 
It doesn't matter if it blends in a little bit with the color, that's quite nice. Like that. So you can see that just adds another layer to it. Now don't go crazy, a lot of people go a bit crazy with the white. And if they feel that their painting's looking a bit flat, they add too much white. It's much better to wash some color off before you add the white, because the white um, tends to bleed through with the other colors. So if I put too much white here, you just wouldn't see it, it would look pink. But I'm just gonna add a few little bits onto some of these. Again, you don't want too much, like that. And then I'm gonna put a yellow dot in the center of these little flowers. Um, as I said before, with, with a lot of the colors, you can get four or five different tones just by adding more or less water. With the yellow, it's a bit more difficult, so I tend to use it fairly straight and then add an orange if I want another tone, but we just want the yellow for this. And you can see now, that's why it's so important that you've left that white gap in those flowers. Otherwise, you wouldn't see the yellow on top of the colors. So I've got some um, juniper somewhere. Oh, here, I've not opened the pot. Now, juniper is kind of a darker bluey green, and it just adds another element to the leaves. So just a tiny bit right at the edges just to get that really, you want, you want tones that go from white to almost black, and that's what this is giving us here on the leaves. A few little bits, like that. So we're nearly done. Finally, I'm just gonna add some grape. Now, because I've done this straight, onto it, I'm not giving it the 10 minutes to dry. I'm kind of gonna dab it a little bit more than actually painting, otherwise the colors will lift up. But just to show you how dark you want it to go. So you can see I've got a white tone, pale um, pink tone going to almost black there. And then just a few little dots of that purple. You know, forget-me-nots have that kind of little dark dot in the middle. Again, if you find that you can't do this with the big brush, then use one of the smaller brushes. And just be very careful. You can see that I'm, I am leaning my hand on the cake, but I'm not pressing down, because obviously you don't want to dent your cake. You just want to be really, really delicate. Now finally, just one last little thing. I'm just gonna use some pink. And I'm just going to add on a couple of the leaves just a little bit of pink highlight. You know, um, rose leaves often have that tiny little bit of pink blush on the edge. And that just gives it that. Like that. So there we go, there's our finished cake. As I said, it should be dry in about 10 minutes. Um, I'm ready to eat. <laughs>